Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see you. Well, I can't see you. You can see me, but it's good to talk with you this afternoon. It's uh, Friday, the end of the first week of March, and I thought uh, I'd give you a few updates from this past week, and hopefully it'll be a brief video. But uh, there's four points I wanted to share with you today. The first one, just to let you know, for those of you who are members of the Georgia Rehabilitation Association, which is our professional membership, which is our state chapter of the National Rehabilitation Association, we met with uh, the GRA uh, president and board earlier this week to talk about the upcoming annual GRA conference in terms of trying to come up with some training concepts uh, that would benefit not just our counselors but other GRA members, whether they're counselors or not, and we're looking to how we can support that this coming year. Just to let you know that discussion has already started. The second point I want to tell you about, for those of you involved with Gracie, the VR case management system, We've decided to uh, actually bring on board a consultant. Uh, his name is David, and he uh, is an application, software application specialist. He actually was the lead application specialist for IBM. He's going to be starting probably around March 15th or March 16th, and what he's going to do is really take a critical look at what are our business needs first and foremost, and then he'll do a gap analysis against our business needs compared to the Gracie system. And then we'll go from there in terms of negotiating either with the vendor or what pieces of it do we keep and improve. So uh, we at least have a plan of action and he will be the single point of contact. And you'll m know more about that once he gets started. Uh, the third thing I want to mention is uh, we had a great opportunity earlier this week. We went over to the Business Enterprise Program and Raj, Gandhi, and her team have really been trying to think outside the box because, as you may know, the number of locations where our blind vendors have opportunities to do business, either in federal buildings or in state operations, such as the vending machines along the interstates, uh, this building here, Twin Towers, have dwindled over time, and that's the case in most states. And so it's really how do we look at newer opportunities to assist individuals who are blind or have significant visual impairments. And we heard three presentations on three really neat ideas that we're kind of excited about. I thought I'd share those with you. And uh, again, a special thanks to Raj Gandhi and her entire team, uh, the vendor, Bob, who was there. Uh, but the first of the three presentations we heard about was really investing in a laundromat. So it kind of gets us out of the food service arena. There's a location off of Jimmy Carter Boulevard. Uh, where we would actually invest in the laundromat and it would be operated by a blind vendor and it is a what they call a cashless uh, laundromat so you don't need coins you actually get little cards that allow you to operate the washers and the dryers the second presentation we heard about was a re also a very fascinating one it was to look at uh, purchasing a franchise of a, a food service a kind of a kiosk called Jimmy's Seaside Fries uh, there's none in Georgia to my knowledge, but we have an opportunity to potentially set up a kiosk in Town Center Mall. Uh, and our vendor, Bob, has gone to visit the one, I think, in Tampa Bay. But it was a real interesting concept, and it really made us think about the franchise world and is, are those some business opportunities for some of our blind vendors. And then the third presentation was about actually operating a pizza truck. And as you all know, food trucks and mobile food trucks are becoming kind of the current um, wave of success. And so this is in that vein. And so uh, we have the opportunity maybe to do a three-month trial on that. But again, thanks to Raj and her team and everybody who was at BA BEP earlier this week. They did a great job. Uh, we're all excited about those. And I, I just love the concept of thinking outside the box and really beginning to stretch our imagination. And then last, I'll give you an update on the, uh, where we're at with the new law, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. We actually had a meeting this morning over at uh, the Department of Economic Development, which is where the Division of Workforce Development sits in our state. And so Ben Hames, who is the Deputy Commissioner of Economic Development and the lead of workforce development in our state, uh, hosted a meeting this morning of all the core programs. And the core programs who were there were the Department of Labor, uh, GVRA, um, Workforce Development, and uh, the Technical Colleges and Adult and Technical Education. So we had our initial meeting. Uh, we've identified uh, starting with some work groups, and at least it's kicked off, and we're going to begin beginning to work together uh, to, towards the implementation of the new law. 
So those are kind of four updates from this week. The session is still going on over the Capitol. And I understand that GRA had some good visits with uh, some of our legislators this week as well. But I hope you have a great weekend. The weather's a little warmer this afternoon than it was this morning. I hope you have a great weekend where you're at. I hope the sun is shining and it's a great, a great time to be outside. So thank you and have a good weekend.